I recently started what is probably my most hardest undertaking ever. Making a procedurally generated voxel RPG game that supports multiplayer. This series is me documenting the process of making such a game. This is Tantan and welcome back to my devlog. A large part of my game is going to be about exploration. So a natural early step in this project is to explore this area of gameplay. Paragliding! It is cool, it is fun, and it gets you to places. Let's go through each and every day to see how we got from this point to this. In the previous version of the game, you had to jump up every single block. This was so tedious, and I want a movement to be smooth even over chaotic terrain. Now, the physics assets I bought in the first episode, one feature it has and a big reason why I bought this asset was that it supported stepping over high ledges. But for some reason this didn't work for me. Until I realized, five freaking hours later, the issue lied within the world generation. Apparently, when you create a mesh during runtime, there is a flag that is the end of all logic. Say hello to use fast midface. <laughs> the default mesh picking options include this thing right here. And I don't know what it does, except it breaks everything. Oh, that's five hours of my life. That is day one. Very productive day. <laughs> I badly wanted to implement paragliding, but before I could do that there was one glaring issue I had to face first. Networked physics. I figured I must be doing something wrong because the client side prediction is wrong a lot causing the game to lag. Funny thing is, this issue is equally small as the one I had on day one. You see, I was running the physics simulation way too many times each second. 50 times a second. My computer could simply not keep up with so many calculations. So all I had to do was to lower the physics update to 30 times a second, and that was all of day two. I know, progress at blazing speeds. Today is Wednesday, the day I will implement Paraglider. And uh, I did so, I guess. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Here it is! Impressed? No. It doesn't actually look like much, but it's kind of fun to see how big difference graphics can make. What we see on the left is the exact same physics simulation to the one on the right. The only difference between these two is that the right one has an animated character. Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. This is what the game looked like on Wednesday. Beautiful. From Thursday to Sunday I had a mini vacation. I went up north to Sweden and I skied some and that was nice. So I got no work done between those days. Getting back into the groove after a vacation is always a bit slow for me. On Monday I tweaked the air glider physics. I did some research into different voxel modeling tools because I will need that. I started learning one called Blockbench. I made a boat similar to one of their examples on their website. Not the most productive day but the coming days would turn out to be pretty awesome. As I saw in the previous example art can make an insane amount of difference. And Tuesday was the day I started implementing an animated character. I did some modeling. I learned I really sucked at modeling, so I stopped modeling. I found a vo voxel model on Ishtaraya for free. And, uh, <laughs> and this will probably be our temporary model until I get better at modeling. I made a decent looking paraglider though. I added camera zoom functionality, a connecting to the server screen, you are for showing the game version. It was a pretty productive day. I did some animation work for paragliding. This was regarding to how the character rotates, and all of that is controlled through code. And it was quite tricky to get as I wanted it, so it took some time. But anyway, I can't get over the fact that this is just a visual thing. Adding this animation makes it feel so much better to control. It's... it's really cool. I made a development menu for some settings. This is very useful for testing the game if we need to jump back to spawn or modify how the networking works. It's time to invite some people and let them try the game out. This is after all a multiplayer game. All right, let's go. Let's go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Wait, do you want to hide or do you want to seek? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can seek. I will close. Ten seconds. <laughs> One. 
three. One eternity late. Can you see me? Nope. <laughs> That is all that has happened up until this point, but I want to make a tiny announcement. I highly value people to sing out my game early on. Not only for feedback, but it's also a big motivating factor as well. Some of you already know about this, uh, about three people. I have a disco group where I occasionally have gaming sessions. I announce a game download, an IP address for the server, some of us jump into the voice channel, and we hang out trying to break my game. If you want to join, try this game out, then come join the disco group. Thank you for watching, leave a like and subscribe if you want to follow the progress of making this game. Time time out!